This is a video about how understanding a single deeper concept will make you suddenly understand a lot of different tools better. From saturation and distortion, limiting, compression and gates to spectral effects, synthesizer modulation and more. Let me introduce you to the humble transfer function. What goes in is seen on the x-axis, what comes out on the y. So far so good. Right now we have a perfect 45 degree line, meaning whatever the input is will also be the output. So let's give it an input, a mix of a song in this case. Moving the top point up and down while keeping the line straight simply acts as a volume control. Next, let's say we want to set everything above a certain input value to the same output value. A horizontal line stopping our signal from getting any louder than the number where it bends. You can see the before in orange and the after in blue. This is called hard clipping and if you overdo it, it sounds like this. Now what if we smooth that transition? We get soft clipping, in some ways a more gentle way of clipping our signal. One interesting characteristic of this is that it retains the loudness hierarchy of a sound a bit better. Where before there was a straight horizontal line, we now have a slope for longer. Meaning that if a value is louder in the input, it will also be louder in the output. Albeit less. On the other hand, this affects more of our sound. We can see that where before we had a straight line, input equals output for quieter parts of the sound, we now have the quieter parts being subtly affected too. Not necessarily in a bad way, this is what's often called saturation, but it's something to be aware of. If we compare soft clipping in orange and hard clipping in blue on a spectrum analyzer, we can see that soft clipping will start adding harmonics earlier into quieter signals but hard clipping will add a lot more harmonics once the signal gets louder. Many clippers and saturators actually show you this transfer function, sometimes mirrored for both sides of the wave and sometimes only for one. Examples for this would be Ableton's and Bitwig stock saturators, Hart's distortion, isotope trash and many more. But just because they don't show it to you doesn't mean it isn't there. Often creative distortion plugins will use more complicated transfer functions to add interesting harmonics and create unexpected reactions to different audio signals. This can include things like wave folding, holding the loudest part towards being quieter again, IP saturation affecting only the quieter parts of the sound, or quantization limiting the input to a certain number of possible output values creating a kind of stair-step effect. Another type of plugin that will often show you its transfer functions are dynamics plugins like compressors, limiters, gates and expanders. What makes these different to wave shapers like clippers is that they have envelope followers that don't act instantly, but with a bit of delay, normally controlled via the attack and release parameters. If, for example, we take curve that we know from hard clipping into a M compressor, but add a bit of release to it, meaning if we turn down the input, it won't immediately jump back up. We've got a limiter. It still ensures that the sound never exceeds a certain level, but because it doesn't relax quite as quickly, it causes less wave shaping distortion to it. Comparing the two in an oscilloscope, we see two main differences. The limiter in blue takes a bit of time to recover after the signal is below the threshold again, so you can see this pumping effect here, while the wave shaper in orange is immediately back to the normal signal. Also, we can see that the limiter in blue preserves the original wave shape of a sign a bit better, while the clipper, because it acts so quickly, just chops off the tops and kind of turns it into a square wave. On a spectrum analyzer, we can see how the wave shaper or clipper in blue adds a lot more harmonics to the sound, while the limiter overall still adds a few odd harmonics, but way less than the clipper. Now if we add two more controls, attack and ratio, we get a compressor. You can see the before signal in orange here and the after in blue. The attack, similarly to the release, slows down our envelope, 
but on the other side of the curve. This can help further reduce distortion and also be used to preserve or even shape the transients of your sound. The ratio allows us to turn down our sound above the threshold without completely squashing it. So for example a 2 to 1 ratio means anything that used to be 6 dB above the threshold is now 3 dB above the threshold. Many compressors also offer a knee control. This is kind of similar to soft clipping. Instead of a clear line between compressing with the ratio and no compression at all, we blur out the transition a bit and let values below the threshold also be compressed a little. Most VST don't let you draw this transfer curve like M compressor, but they let you manipulate it via some preset controls and then show you the result. Some examples would be FabFilter Pro C, Bitwig Stock Dynamics and Compressor Plus devices, Kilohertz Dynamics, Ableton's compressor in the right visualization mode, and many many more. Now that's just a compressor, but nothing can stop us from taking this same transfer function and instead of bending it downwards, bending it upwards. Meaning we take the high input values and make them even higher. You can see the after in orange and the before in blue here. This is what's called upwards expansion. You can see on our example drum break that the loudest peaks are getting more exaggerated, while the quieter parts are left alone. Or we take the quiet part and turn it up instead of turning the loud part down. This is upward compression, maybe best known in a multiband setup as part of the infamous OTT effect. If we turn the quiet part down, we get downward expansion, an effect similar but not quite identical to gating. Anything below this threshold will now get turned down. The quieter, the quieter it becomes. Uh, be aware that I switched around blue and orange again. You can see blue as after and orange as before. Gating is very similar sounding to downward expansion, it's just a bit of a different curve shape. Instead of gradually decreasing the volume below the threshold according to a ratio, we make a hard cut, turning anything below it down by a certain amount. This is what is usually called the gate range. These examples should also explain why compression and limiting can sound like distortion if attack and release are too fast. Clipping is just compression with no attack and release allowing the volume changes be so fast that the ear hears them as additional frequencies. Now we can't just send an audio signal into a transfer function, we can also hard clip an LFO. What do I mean by that? Well another place where we often encounter these transfer functions is in synthesizer modulation mapping. Let's take a look at Vital for example. I've got this patch here where I'll modulate the filter cutoff with an LFO, the oldest trick in the book. If we now go into the matrix tab, we can see a familiar UI. This too is a transfer curve. But it's not processing our audio, it's processing the LFO. We can clip it. We can expand it. We can compress it. Or gated. Some other places we can encounter these transfer functions for modulations are Bitwix modulation mapping in the inspector, in phase plant as a remap modulator, and also in the grid by simply wave shaping our LFO signals.
I want to show you one more plugin that uses transfer curves in the spectral domain. So instead of looking at the oscilloscope like before, it kind of looks at this frequency spectrum and that's M transformer. So we can both get transfer curves for frequency and for input level. So I've got the input here in orange, the output in blue. It's right now covered by this orange thingy here. But we can both map the frequency to a different value. So we can like bend this frequency mapping and you can see it kind of shifts the frequencies down. And this tool is a uh, transfer curve. You can see the hertz values here on the x-axis for input and then y-axis for output. So if we bend this upwards, it kind of shifts the frequencies up. And we can also do a similar thing for levels. So we can kind of compress these all individually. Let me just reset this transformation curve properly. And we can see this best with something like a saw wave here, maybe. We can see an orange here. And then we can kind of shift the quieter harmonics of the saw wave up. So we can compress them upwards here or we can um, bend them downwards. Let me just change the visualization here so you can better see them. So now you can see it's kind of gating the individual harmonics or downwards expanding them like this. And then this kind of works less well for the, the compressor analogy, but you can see how it kind of shifts the harmonics all upwards, all of them. And then we can also like do stuff like bending them all towards one, one kind of place in the spectrum here, where they all get kind of uh, squished together here into this place kind of. So that's another interesting place where transfer functions occur. Um, I think understanding them will really make a lot of different UIs make more sense for you. Uh, one last thing, a bit of an advertisement, I still have some slots open for private lessons. So uh, I'll link to this in the description somewhere on the pinned comment. Um, if you're interested in taking private lessons, just anything you want to talk about mixing, uh, mastering sound design, any kind of plugin you want to understand better. Bitwig stuff, of course, always, always great. Uh, that kind of stuff, uh, just take a look there. You can book a private lesson. Um, and I'll link you some free plugins that you can use to explore transfer curves in the pinned comment as well. So like, um, M, M Transformer isn't free, but like a killer hearts shape, her killer hearts um, dynamics are great for this. M Compressor is really great because it really lets you draw the transfer curve yourself, M Wave Shaper. And there was another one I forgot now, but you'll see it then. Uh, so yeah. Ah yeah, Vital, of course. Vital is free. So um, see you in the next one. Hope this was helpful somehow.